Welcome to Amplifier's interview series. My name is Christian, and joining me today is the founder and CEO at Little Code, Nicola. Nicola, welcome to the series, my friend. How are you today? Thank you. Actually, I'm quite good. Uh, the weather is actually quite bad <laughs> at my place, but uh, I'm feeling really good this Friday and eager to finish the day successfully. Yeah. Well, thank God it's Friday and uh, yeah, and being inside away from the weather, I guess this is a good place to be. Uh, and I'm excited for this interview because we are talking about the Internet of Things and more specifically the Industrial Internet of Things or IIoT. So maybe to start us off, perhaps you can explain the concept of digital twins and how it fits into the Industrial Internet of Things landscape. Okay, thank you for the question. It's a great question to start with. So let me explain briefly what the digital twin is. Basically, it's virtual representation or digital representation of the real device. So you can imagine whatever you have in the production line, everything, mo most of the things could be described digitally. And by describing it digitally, what we are thinking is like uh, some kind of digital product that is producing the same or similar data as the real device. Typically, we could build it as standalone application or something like that, or even specific software to simulate the device that will actually produce the signals that we are expecting from functioning real device. Also, with the digital things, we have a great opportunity to simulate even edge cases when our uh, we could simulate the edge cases when our real device is not performing so good we could simulate it with digital twin in control environment whenever we need to for various reasons typically we are we want to simulate our whole system how it will react to bad things bad situations how will impact how that will impact our production line Will, will there be some kind of pause that we cannot actually have it because it will incur some costs or something different. Also, if you are thinking about building the software that depends on the real hardware, for example, if you are building the application that is testing some, some of your products, maybe some kind of electric motor, it is really convenient to have digital twin as a source of data. Because in that way, you could actually simulate whatever you need to simulate to build the application successfully. And if you are thinking about the electrical motor, there is a lot of signals that are produced when the motor is doing fine. But, even, but when you think what the motor is doing when it is not performing fine, when there is some edge cases for whatever reason, you could simulate it with digital twin without real cost of putting the real device in a bad state, potentially harm it or even lose it, it could be really, really expensive. If you are doing it with the digital twin, you are basically safe. And it's kind of really, really good tool uh, for the development process of the software, because every developer could run its own instance of the digital twin on his own computer, if necessary or it could be distributed device that will actually produce the data in some central space and everybody could subscribe to it. So there are a lot of opportunities how the digital twins could actually improve the process if they are used correctly and if you are like eager to invest some time, the benefits are countless. It's super interesting and you know I, I can see why uh, a lot of industry uh, would would use uh, the digital twins because, uh, again, sustainability uh, and, and cost effectiveness, uh, it all makes so much sense. Let's let's talk about uh, Industry 4.0 and how does, you know, the industrial uh, Internet of Things fit into it and what are the key benefits that companies can gain from it? Okay, mm, I would say there is no industry 4.0 without industrial internet of things because if you think of it it's mostly about some kind of signals and that's where the iot comes in it produces a lot of data a lot of signals that companies can actually use to improve their processes even products 
based on the knowledge that they gain from the signals. So some obvious benefits are improved efficiency and maybe reduced the reduced uh, downtime. So you could imagine that you could spot on whatever is um, happening in your production line way before seeing it physically or I don't know spotting the bad product. So the efficiency is proved, uh, downtime is reduced. That leads to the cost savings that are really, really big if you are acting on the information that you have gathered from the Internet of Things setup. There is also predictive maintenance. You could, so th there is like really, really good example. How could you do the predictive maintenance? There are formulas for that, of course. So you could do it even without anything regarding the IoT, but also with the IoT, th there is one particular example where you could model your device that you are monitoring, that you are interested in being maintained. You could model it with the digital twin and compare real device with the digital twin, compare their output, and you can spot the differences. You can spot some kind of deviations and you can act on it. You could prevent the cost, you can prevent the downtime. So there is something really, really interesting to invest your time in or even money. And there is also something that's maybe not so um, obvious on the first go, but there is increased flexibility. So you could actually be more flexible with your business decisions if you are acting on the real-time data that you have all the time about your production line, about your processes, about some kind of potential spots for improvements because flexibility is really really important nowadays because market switch really really quickly and you need to follow it so with the proper information that is product of the proper IoT is tremendous also if you are starting with the IoT processes in your company like for the very first time, there is kind of eye-opening moment when you look at the information that you haven't seen any time before. And now there is endless possibilities in your mind for the first time and you can see like quite literally what's obvious to improve, what's obviously going bad. And you can actually act on it and be better with the processes, better with the product, faster, maybe lower your cost, time to market. So that, that's something that is really, really cool with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it seems like there's there's just so many benefits uh, of going this route. Maybe uh, you could discuss the benefits of edge computing and if there are any potential drawbacks. Okay, so let me explain a little bit what the edge computing is. So nowadays the devices are being more and more powerful and if you think of the IoT in terms of the amount of data that is being produced, we could easily see that is a lot of data that requires a lot of processing power to actually make some kind of processing to for the actions to be actually possible on that data and since uh, devices are getting more and more powerful even small devices even industrial devices have all kind of processing capabilities we, we could typically use that processing capability that is not used now to actually perform some kind of computation on the real device close to the data there is no need sending something to the cloud to be processed. While we have the some kind of hardware that is actually capable of processing, sitting there without any proper utilization. So, what we are calling the edge is some kind of boundary where the data leaves the data source and goes to the cloud for the processing. If we are thinking about the data source part of the 
or side of the edge, we could do a lot of things. Typically, there is possibility to aggregate the data. Because we do not really benefit from the raw data that some sensor is producing, we need to aggregate it. We need to aggregate it by, I don't know, for five minutes or a few days or whatever the signal is, we decide how to aggregate it. Then we could send it to the cloud. There is benefits from that. There is reduced latency if we are sending smaller amount of data. If you are thinking about managing data that is security critical, that data does not need to actually leave the data source. Maybe it doesn't fit to the cloud. If you are thinking about some kind of security issues, it's better. Or maybe it's by law that you cannot send it to the cloud. You could utilize the processing power on that part of the edge to actually do whatever processing you need and then send the data that is pre-cooked, let's call it like that, to the cloud. So it's really making sense in that way. So the centralization of the system is not anymore in question if you are thinking of about single point of failure. If you could see, if you can imagine, um, I don't know, a lot of factories producing the data and every factory is actually aggregating the data within itself, within itself, and then sending it to the cloud, then the factory is not affected if cloud system or main system is being down for some time. Because usually when you, uh, when you process the data on the edge, you actually store it, at least temporarily, until it's sent to the cloud. When there is no cloud connection, there is no problem because you are safe. You process the data, you just it's just a matter when you will send it. So th there is kind of um, improved overall system architecture if you are doing it like that. But also there, there are some drawbacks because the complexity of the system is greatly increased. You could think of many little computers, small computers that are not actually with proper operating systems, potentially, that needs to be secured in the first place. They, they need to be maintained. They need to have new version of your software that is sending data to the cloud. So that increases complexity really greatly, I would say. Depending uh, on your actual processing, those small machines could be maybe lacking in power, even though today, okay, the, even those small devices are, have like good hardware and everything, it really depends what are you doing on them. It could be that you need to invest in new hardware on the edge that could lead to potential cost higher costs that you are not willing or that are not justifiable by business. So the, the, there are positive sides and negative sides on doing things on the edge. So it really, really boils down to what are you trying to do and what are you trying to improve and achieve in some time. I'm not saying that edge is bad. It's a matter of decision when you should do it. Hmm. not should you it's it's super interesting and like all the capabilities now as you know our digital worlds are expanding uh and all the potential possibilities and futures out there and how you can take a look at this data and being able to use it um you know i think we can go on for hours and hours nicola but i have one final question for you if people are interested in finding out more about little code and what you guys do where can they go Okay, you can find more or less every information on our website, so it's littlecode.com. Also, you could subscribe to our LinkedIn profile, where we actually announce when we are visiting some kind of conference, industrial conference. For example, we went to the Barcelona World IoT Congress, and you could meet us in person, so you could maybe benefit from some kind of experience that we already have, or maybe we will benefit from your experience or potentially doing things together in the future. 
Awesome. So go check out Little Code. The, the descriptions uh, and the links are in the description here. So, uh, Nikola, I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on. Yeah, it was my pleasure also. Thank you.